Bomba. What's up everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So as you may or may not know, I'm training right now for the Chicago Marathon and I've been trying to switch out my shoes uh, less frequently because I don't want my PF issues to flare up. So I had been using the Nike Invincible for uh, the first like two and a half, three weeks of my training, honestly, and it was going really well until it wasn't. And I think part of the problem there is that there's just really no stability in the shoe. And that's something I've talked about quite a bit. I'm a person who does need stability, but I really, really love the way the midsole of the Invincible feels, so I try to ignore it and I couldn't really ignore it anymore. But conveniently, a brand new stability shoe did arrive at my doorstep the other day, so I figured, all right, I'll give this a shot and see if I feel a little bit better. And that shoe is the New Balance Vongo V5. Despite the fact that I do overpronate, I don't really tend to gravitate towards stability shoes just because I feel like they're forcing my foot in an unnatural way and the midsoles just never, um, they never do it for me. They always leave something to be desired. I will say that I am really, really happy with this shoe and we're gonna talk all about why that is today, but first, of course, the run footage. Let's do it. start today I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Running Warehouse and New Balance but neither company is gonna tell me what to say they can't tell me what to say uh, they're not gonna see this video before you and all of my opinions as always in every video are my own the New Balance Vongo V5 is 7.8 ounces for a women's size 8, but for my size 10 and a half women's, the shoe came in at 9.7 ounces. It has a 7 to 8 millimeter drop. I'm not exactly sure on the specifics there. I couldn't find the exact measurements, but however, I do know that for me, this shoe is true to size. I've really enjoyed the Vongo V5's upper, and that's because it feels like it's working with two different types of materials here. In the forefoot, you have New Balance's Hypo Knit material. It's very stretchy, extremely breathable, and quite comfortable. But as you get further and further back into the shoe, it looks like they're using a more of a mesh material here. In the midfoot, the material gets a bit thicker, and we do have some overlays and the New Balance logo that just wrap around your foot and keep your midfoot locked down to that platform. And then going to the back of the shoe, you have a nice sturdy heel counter that's also gonna keep your ankle in place. One of the things that I really liked about the New Balance 1080 V10 and V11 was that hypo knit material. And I loved, especially in the V11, how it was very breathable in the forefoot of the shoe. But unfortunately for me, that just wasn't a stable enough upper. Here, I really like how they're giving their stability runners the best of both worlds. You can have that stretchy, breathable material in that forefoot, but we are gonna give you a little bit more in the midfoot and in the back of the heel to work with. I do think that's a really nice way to approach a stability shoe because I think a lot of times stability runners feel sort of like an afterthought and we don't really get the coolest of the shoes um, and the best technologies, but here they are giving you a little bit of that and I appreciate that, I like it. The toe box of this shoe is pretty wide. I have a nice amount of room here and I'd say the midfoot is pretty standard. It's not too narrow, it's not too wide. I do think that a variety of different foot types will be able to get into this, but if you have a super, super wide foot, maybe you might have a little bit of problem. For me, the shoe really did fit perfect. The laces uh, helped keep me locked in. The tongue is very padded and comfortable. It's not gusseted, uh, but it didn't seem to matter at all. And along the ankle collar of the shoe, there's just enough padding. It's not too beefed up, but it's again, just enough, very comfortable. 
And I, I don't know, I really can't say too much bad about this upper because I think for uh, a stability shoe, this is probably one of the better uppers that I've seen. And honestly, I think the 1080 would do even better if it had this kind of upper. I think it would appeal to a lot more people. I had no issues with hot spots, blisters, or irritation in the Van Gogh V5. And for me, this is a two thumbs up, although I can't really give two thumbs up because I'm holding the shoe, but. If I could, it would be two thumbs up. Now for the midsole of the Van Gogh V5. Here, New Balance is using their Fresh Foam X material. You see this in the Beacon. You see this in the 1080. Uh, it's really like their softest foam. It's a little bit different from Fuel Cell in the sense that it's not as responsive, but it is more cushioned. And then on the medial side of the midfoot, you'll see what looks like a marble pattern, slightly different from the rest of the shoe. And that's what New Balance is calling their gradient stability. Now, Running Warehouse is saying this gradient stability utilizes pellet in the foam to gradually get denser near the medial midfoot for just smoother support. I think this is a great way to do stability. If you've watched any of my other stability shoe videos, I really don't like when there's tons of plastic and all these different systems that are inside of the shoe that kind of force your foot in a different direction than the way it's naturally used to going. Here, this gradient stability in the Vongo really does help to uh, correct my foot, but not in a forceful and obviously harsh way. We're seeing a lot now that these different running shoe companies are trying to go this route and sort of uh, use the midsole and that construction to uh, create a more stable ride rather than just throwing some plastic and all this different stuff on the shoe to make it more stable. And I think that's the, the direction that stability shoes will be heading in in the future and are currently heading in right now. And I like that. I think that's a great way to do it. And I think that it's done really, really well here in the Vongo. No no, the shoe isn't as soft as the 1080, but it's not as firm as the 880. You're gonna get a nice soft forefoot. It really doesn't feel too firm here, and, and I actually quite like it and feel somewhat of like a rocker forward technology here. Uh, so it is a pleasant ride, I'm not gonna lie. It's not as exciting as the Invincible as what I was running in, but it's enough to make me think, huh, this is very comfortable. It does get a bit firmer in the heel, which is good for me and my PF issues, but if that's something that you don't like and think will be a problem for you, it's definitely something to be aware of. I think the Vongo is a great option for the runner who's looking for a little bit of light stability. Whether you're a stability runner who can't stand those beefed up stability shoes like the 860 and like the Kayano and all those kinds of shoes, then this is a good option, a good something to look at. And I also think honestly that a neutral runner who finds the 1080 slightly too soft and maybe a little too unstable and uh, finds the 880 to be too firm, I think this is a good uh, middle ground there. I don't think that this shoe is gonna have any problem going the distance. I do think you can absolutely take it long. I will be testing it myself to see if that is the case, but I'm pretty positive it's gonna be a really good shoe for that. I'm pretty happy with it and it's not a shoe that I dread picking up and I'm like, oh, I gotta wear a stability shoe, gotta wear the Vongo today. I actually don't feel that at all. I'm excited and, uh, happy to pick it up and take it out and that's really all we can ask for. Turning over the Vongo V5, New Balance is using blown rubber. It does pretty much cover the entire shoe except for the center of the heel and it also has some flex grooves just to help your foot flex the way it is supposed to. So far so good, I have no problems with this traction. This kind of rubber setup that New Balance uses is never really an issue for me at all. And with 13 miles on the shoe, I'm not really seeing a ton of wear, although there is a little bit of wear at the very, very top of the forefoot. Um, but I do think that this outsole is going to be uh, pretty durable. It's great because the rubber doesn't get in the way of the ride of the shoe. It doesn't make it too stiff. The New Balance Vongo V5 is $149.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which Honestly feels a little bit high for this shoe. I could see it maybe being like 130. <sighs> Running shoes these days just get higher and higher in price. What can I say? If you're interested in picking up your own pair of the Van Gogh V5, just go to the link in the description of this video. Click that link and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind, this is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel. So I can hopefully help some of you who are in the same boat as me, maybe training for a marathon or training for your next big race and you're trying to find that perfect shoe.
I don't want to jinx it, but so far, so good in this shoe. And I'm really hoping, fingers are crossed, that it stays that way because I really don't want to keep changing up my shoes constantly. Not something that I want to be doing for this. It seems like New Balance really thought about what the stability runner wants rather than what New Balance thinks the stability runners need. Fingers crossed that it keeps my PF at bay. Fingers crossed, guys. Well, that concludes my first run impressions of the New Balance Vongo V5. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. So this is kind of the best looking stability shoe I've seen in a while too. I have some more videos for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time.